All right, we're back. We are on page 63, and we're going to do some of my favorite types of problems. So these are problems where we're composing a trig function, inverse trig function, or the other way around, and um, they're not famous. So we're going to have to draw triangles. And when we do that, we just have to be really careful. So there's, there's two things that I think you really need to know. Uh, one of them, three things. There's at least three things. There might be a thousand things, actually. Uh, the first one is, when you draw your triangles, if it's a negative ratio, make sure you put it in the right quadrant, right? So if it's arc sine or arc tangent and it's a negative ratio, it should be in quadrant four. If it's arc cosine and it's negative, it should be in quadrant two. Think of the unit circle pictures that we've drawn for the inverses. They can help you a lot with these problems. The other thing, uh, or another thing, is every time you hit a new inverse trig function, it changes the relationship to the sides. So you're going to need a new triangle. So every new inverse trig function, new triangle. Then the other thing to know, and I know I'm just piling this on, we haven't even done anything yet. The other thing to know is that uh, a normal trig function, so a trig function and an inverse trig function will disappear together. So, uh, and that's gonna be the weirdest part, I think, initially. So let's just see if we can do this. So I look at this thing and I say, three halves is not a famous ratio, and so I have to draw a triangle. So the triangle I'm gonna draw is going to reflect the fact that theta is the cosecant inverse, which again is weird, right? Like I don't want to use, nobody wants to use cosecant inverse. Um, cosecant of theta is three halves. Like I don't even really want to use that. I would much prefer to use sine. Sine of theta is two thirds. So in my mind, I'm thinking that. Let's draw a triangle for, whoa, collapse down to a single point. What makes it do that? Okay, here. And then we're gonna have an angle theta. And this theta, let me, let me highlight, this is theta, this is theta. And now our problem, because we said theta is the inverse cosecant of three halves, the problem we're trying to solve is actually to find the cotan of theta. But based on the triangle, if cosecant is three halves, sine is two thirds, so I'm gonna put a two here and a three here. What? Like what, what auto shape even is that? And then, uh, so what's the missing side? It's gonna be the square root of nine minus four. So the square root of five. And the question is, what is the cotangent of theta? So the tangent of theta is two over root five. So the cotangent is gonna be root five, root, root five, root five over two. And there you go. So that's what this thing evaluates to. We're going to do all of these this way. Uh, it's like a superpower because like, it's so weird that you can do them, I guess, is what it comes down to. That's, that's what I marvel over is the fact that you can even do them at all. So your first step is you look, we're going to do the secant of the inverse sine of something that's just not famous. And so you can skip like half a step if you want to say uh, the sine of theta is negative three fifths. Like we know that that's true because we know theta is the inverse sine of negative three fifths. So you could skip that. You also don't have to, you never have to skip steps, um, you know, useful steps. So inverse sine here. Now, why am I doing this? And why am I doing it so small? Uh, the reason I'm doing this, and actually I'm gonna make it smaller, I guess, get it out of my way. Whoa, no, I'm not. Ah. I don't know what's happening. There we go. Reason, why? Why do you do that? It like goes for a second and then it pops back. Uh, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna erase this. Get out. And we'll just make it smaller. Okay, inverse sine is here. So if inverse sine and there's a negative, that means that the triangle I draw technically has to be here. And so this is my triangle and that looks really good. Uh, but anyway, so theta is like all the way around here, except it's not, it's actually here. That's theta. Sine of theta is negative three fifths, so negative three and five, which makes this four. And then the question we're trying to answer is, what is the secant of theta? So cosine of theta is four fifths, so um, secant is five fourths. All right, let's try the next one. So this one, uh, there's, there's a lot of them, right? So 
cosecant of the inverse cosine of the tangent of the inverse sine of 7 over 25. All right, let's, let's see if we can do it. So the, they come sort of in pairs, right? So the first thing we're going to do is find the tangent of the inverse sine. Then after we find the tangent of the inverse sine, we'll have like a ratio, right? Because tangent of something is a ratio. Then we're going to do the cosecant of the inverse cosine of that ratio. So they're going to disappear in pairs. The tangent and the arc sine will disappear at the same time. Then the cosecant and the inverse cosine are going to disappear at the same time. So they disappear in pairs. Let's see if we can do this. So I know that I'm going to draw a triangle. And for that triangle, there's going to be an angle theta. So this is, this is more like the work that I end up doing. Theta, I'm going to call it theta like sub one, I guess. We're never going to know what theta is. That's the weirdest part. We have no idea. I just know that the sine of theta is 7 over 25, which means the missing side is 24. 7, 24, 25, famous right triangle. Now I need the tangent of theta, right? So in this problem, I have made this be theta sub 1. So the tangent of theta sub 1 is 7 over 24. So this problem now becomes the cosecant of the cosine inverse of whatever I said, 7 over 24. Okay, so now what are we going to do? We're going to do it again, but we need to draw a new triangle. So this is like theta sub 2. And so I'm going to draw a new triangle. And it has an angle, theta sub 2. And the cosine of theta sub 2 is 7 over 24. So the hypotenuse is 24. This is 7. And then here, I need the square root of 24 squared minus 7 squared, which like, there's, so, there's a lot of ways you can deal with this. One thing that I think is really useful, and I don't know if we talked about it earlier. I don't know when we would have talked. This might be when we talk about this. Uh, there's a thing you can do when you're finding the missing leg of a right triangle. So you pretty much always end up with, because you know the hypotenuse, you always end up with like, uh, square root of a squared minus b squared, which a squared minus b squared factors, right? You can make this a plus b, a minus b. And sometimes that's easier to do. So here, for example, I could say this is the square root of 24 plus 7 is 31. And 24 minus 7 is 17. And now I just need to multiply 17 and 31. That's if you don't want to square the two things and subtract. I don't. I don't really think it makes a difference in this particular case. Um, but off the top of my head, I can't remember what 24 squared is. So I'm like just avoiding that issue. Uh, 576, I guess. So it's 576 minus 49. But let's see uh, this in action. So 31, 17, 7, 21, 0, 1, 3, 7, 2. So I get 527. Or I was thinking that it was, uh, what did I think it was? 576? minus 49, so you got to like borrow seven, then like 52 minus four, no, what? 56 minus four is 52, 527, either way, but it's inside a radical. So this is radical 527. So I use the, uh, the little like factoring trick like a lot. Uh, I find it much easier to multiply than to square things and subtract them. I don't, I don't know. Your, your mileage may vary. Uh, so let's see here. We are now looking for the cosecant of theta 2. So the sine of theta 2 is radical 527 over 7. Nope. It's radical 527 over 24. So the cosecant is 24 over radical 527. And that's one of those where um, the calculator is going to rationalize that. So it's going to be like a little hard to check. I'm going to do one more of these and then uh, I think I'll check them on the calculator and then uh, cut this and then come back in the next one maybe because I think the the arithmetic might get worse as we go. Now you know what I'm going to cut this here. It's like halfway through the page sort of although it doesn't really give the appearance of that. I will check it though. Let's see. So to check these just type in exactly what you're given. So cotan of the arc cosecant of three halves, radical five over two, got it. Secant arc sine of negative three fifths, 
five fourths. Got it. Cosecant of the arc cosine of seven over 24. It'll rationalize. That's a really nice rationalization though, because nothing canceled. So it didn't like rationalize and lose us like all of our information that we thought we knew. So we got them all right. And we got them right because we drew triangles and then we thought about the ratios and kept track of things like that. So I will be back in the next video to, I hope, finish these three problems, but we'll see. Uh, but anyway, I will see you there.